So um, what I wanted to speak about this evening was um, in part of what part of it has to do with the term that's used in this week. Uh, this week is a double parsha. It's Tazria and Mitzora. And Tazria and Mitzora are, I would say, among the more difficult um, of the parshios, especially if you want to learn them in depth and you want to understand what's going on and going through the the Rashi's and the uh, Mephorshim and understanding the halacha of it is very, very uh, complex. Um, it's actually David HaMelech, um, King David, prayed and asked Hashem that saying the Sefer of Tehillim, saying the Psalms, should be considered as if you were studying Negoyim and Ohalos. Negoyim is um, saras, or the the negayim comes from the word we're going to talk about tonight, nega, or plague. The word nega, negayim is the name of the mishnayas, which deal with the laws of saras that are discussed in both of this week's sedras. Um, and he prayed that Tehillim should be considered as, um, when one recites Tehillim, it should be as effective as studying the most difficult laws, the laws of Negoyim and the laws of Ohalos. Ohalos is another Masechta that's very difficult as well. But you see that the fact that he asked that Tehillim should be considered like studying Negoyim, you see that, um, that King David and our, our sages had considered the study of this area of Jewish law to be among the most difficult, if not the most difficult. So it, it's not it's um it, it, i'll tell you a fascinating thing um there's a, a famous statement of Reb Chaim of Elushin, Reb Chaim of Elushin, the prime disciple of the Vilna Gon. um actually he says this um in his uh, in his work nefesh Chaim. he says uh, talk about although that's a famous chazal famous statement that david hamalach king david prayed that saying to him should be as effective as studying these difficult laws he makes the point that it doesn't say that Hashem answered him. It just says that he asked. <laughs> it doesn't say that necessarily it is as good. It's just that he requested that from Hashem, and there's no indication that Hashem necessarily agreed. And therefore, there isn't necessarily, although Tehillim is very, very holy, there isn't necessarily a replacement for being able to plumb the depths of the difficult areas of Jewish law. We tonight are not going to plumb those depths. So you can take, don't worry, don't have to put on your seatbelts. Um, although I will tell you that in one, one um, golf manor synagogue, Chumashir, I took, I'm really, I'm really sharing this more for Rabbi Alt. Um, I once took the opportunity to go through, in the second of this week's Sedras, Parshas Mitzorah, to go through the famous Gzera Shava famous bridge between the two words Veshav HaKoyin Uba HaKoyin which, which if you go through the Rashis it's actually been, in Lung Chumash Rashis probably the most difficult part un, explains how um, you're supposed to set up the various psukim, the various verses of the Parsha differently than they are numbered here in the, actually in the Chumash and um, I took that through and um, I there was one person who I He's not joining us tonight that I know of. Simon Groner is not here, but he, he loved that cheer, I remember. But I, I took everyone clearly through how exactly how to understand that. But we won't do that tonight either. Instead, I want to talk about the word nega, the word plague, um, and its relationship to a word that is quite the opposite. And the interesting thing is that certainly in the area of Torah known as remez, um, that or illusion, the combination, the changes in words themselves, there's often a relationship between opposite words. Um, and this word nega, it's I want to share with you if I can, I can share, I can, I like, I can share the screen, right? So I want to sure. share with you some content. Um, hold on, I want to share for the uh. Man or Sheer, I want to share first. Um, this is a this is a Kabbalistic work called Sefer Yitzira, the Book of Creation, um, and it is a Sefer 
a book of which I don't understand almost any of it, including this small, including this piece that I have here on the screen. Um, it only begins by saying there are 22 letters, and then after that I sort of lose what he's saying. But he makes this one point at the end, which I've sort of red crayoned in. It says, Vizehu similar dover. This is a an indication of this idea that Ein Betova, there's nothing better, Lamaila above me Oneg, from Oneg, Oneg, like we say Oneg Shabbos, to enjoy Shabbos. The word, in fact, the word enjoy, if you think about the word enjoy, has the same root as the word Oneg, as many English words can be found related to Hebrew words. Oneg and enjoy. The hmm. Ein Bera, and there's nothing worse, Lamata, below me Nega. Nega and Oneg are the same letters, as you will notice. Ayin and Gimel, Nun Gimel Ayin. They are the same. So they're, they're polar opposites, the Sefer Yitzir is telling us. And yet there is some sort of an internal relationship between the two of them. Now, in what way is Oneg necessarily enjoyment the highest form? So for that, I'd like to share with you um, something... Um, that is a very famous quote from the very beginning of the classic work of Musser from the Ramosh Chaim Lutzato, the Mesil HaSushar, the Path of the Just. And this is, the, if, if you are familiar at all with the founder of Asha Torah, Rabbi Noach Weinberg, he made a whole, his whole, um, his whole life was built around this idea um, that man was created to enjoy himself and that the greatest enjoyment is a relationship with Hashem Himself. And that's what this statement says. That which our sages have taught us, have instructed us, is man was only created in only just to enjoy Hashem and to benefit and enjoy the, the radiance of His presence. That is the true enjoyment. And the great, greatest pleasure. From all the pleasures that one can have. And that's why we're told that the Olam Haba, the world to come, which is where we um, will truly be able to enjoy Hashem, right, is all of the enjoyments of, uh, the Mishnah tells us that all of the enjoyments of the, um, of the world um, all the enjoyments of the world do not, comp of our world, do not compare to even just one moment of enjoyment in the world to come. Because God created man to enjoy, really to enjoy. But in order for man to truly enjoy something, he has to earn it. <clears throat> and that's why the Moshe Chaim Lutzato expresses in his other works, like Derech Hashem, that Hashem created man just with one mitzvah, the mitzvah not to eat from the tree, and they failed in that. And that's why we had to take this detour and to recreate the recreate that paradise. So that's the idea that oneg is really that's the, the, the idea with the sefer yitzira. We saw first saying that there's nothing above, there's nothing above oneg and nothing below nega of a plague. And so I wanted to share with you about that is. Um, a fascinating um, idea that's expressed by Ephraim Zal Zalman Margolius. Ephraim um, Zalman Margolius, uh, you know, it keeps on doing this to me. Let's see here. Ephraim Zalman Margolius took this Pasuk here and said as follows. The Pasuk, see, among the various types of saras of afflictions, um, that are described in this week's Torah portion, there is afflictions that take place to a person's, various parts of a person's body. And then there is a discussion of his, of his clothing, of if it afflicts his clothing. The next, second parish in Mitzorah, it talks about it affecting his house. But when the Torah describes how it can affect his garments, there's this Pasuk, which I will read to you. One part of the process um, is that he needs to wash the piece of clothing um, with the uh, with the affliction on it. Um, now the coin, if the coin looks after it's been washed, and 
it has not changed its appearance. Eino, the word ayin for I, also can mean appearance. Right? It has not changed its appearance. But negalopasa, it hasn't spread. Still tamehu, it still remains tameh. But ish tisrefenu means to be burnt in fire. he, it's a, it's some sort of an affliction. But karachto even either in its thickness um, or its thinness. It's a separate issue what that what those two words mean. But uh, the Rebbe Zalman wanted to say something very clever about this: that if nega and oneg are really the opposite of each other. It's alluded to in this pasuk, because it says "Vinelo hafach aneges eno," right? That when one finally gets rid of the nega, when one gets rid of the plague, it's, that's when we can really be oneg. That's when we can really enjoy ourselves. That's something we're looking forward to, of course. And therefore, he says, "Vinelo hafach." It hasn't turned around. Hafach is to turn something around. If the the nega has is not turned around, the ayin eno. The word ayin, right, and I and I are the same word. The ayin has not been changed around, so then that means that if the nega hasn't changed its ayin, the nun is still before the gimel, and the ayin is after the gimel. Had it turned around, if we would have had the ayin before the gimel and the nun afterwards, you would have oneg. So this is alluding to this idea that the ayin being flipped would have taken the person out of saras, out of this affliction, so that the hafach as eno, flipping around the ayin, changes the situation from nega, from affliction, from plague, to oneg, to enjoyment. So this person who's, whose garment has not been changed yet, his ayin, his ayin has not flipped. And therefore, he's still in the state of nega, of affliction, and plague. He hasn't switched over to the idea of, uh, of a... Uh, of a of a uh, oneg um, wanted to uh, the, speaking of the idea of oneg I just want to it's, share it's with very you. And Rabbi Spenner I just want to jump yes, in I, please. I heard this exact idea very recently in the name of the Chidusha Harim that the difference between nega and oneg is where you place your eye in you know, how, you, uh-huh. how you look at the way, I, the way I heard it reported was the way you look at a situation is the way he uh, Interest, interesting interesting